this video, I'm going to go over how to use user authentication and actions and what that actually means. So I'm going to start with, let's first understand what an action is in Copilot Studio. So if we want to understand what an action is, we really just need to think about an API or a uh, connector that basically is allowing you to be able to put a wrapper around this API so that you can talk to it in a conversational manner or like a conversational wrapper for this API or the connector that you're trying to connect with. And so we can do this with Power Automate flows. We can do it with um, bot framework bots that are otherwise known as skills. And we can also do this with a connector. But in the end, you're really just trying to talk to an API through a way where I'm interfacing with it as a normal conversation, just like it's a person. Now, the next thing we need to understand is what is user authentication inside of an action in Copilot Studio. So if we think about user authentication in actions, it's the concept of, I have a user, that user wants to connect to my custom copilot, that custom copilot has different actions defined within it, as we defined earlier, and then that will get me access to the API. But the question really becomes, do I want to use the user's authentication or do I want the author of the copilot to be able to define how to authenticate to this action or API on the back end? Sometimes you want to impersonate the user. Other times you want the user to not have to have an authentication. You're going to use like a service principal name or an API key or something of that nature to be able to access the API. As many of you know, in my videos, I like to show you where the documentation is for this in case you wanna go explore on your own. And you'll see that configuring end user authentication for your action actually has a pretty good article here where you can go in and you can see that there's the Copilot author authentication, or you can say user authentication that you wanna use. And if you scroll further down, you'll also find out that when you create these different connections and you're being able to use them, there are different channels that are supported to be able to do this and other channels that are not supported. So you can see here that like if you want to do this in your own custom website or you want to use Teams or you want to use Omnichannel for customer service, which is our Dynamics for Customer Service offering, those support user authenticated um, actions at this point. So, but other channels don't support that. And it really is going to be a channel specific thing as we go forward. So now let's jump into Copilot Studio and see this actually in action. Um, what I'm going to do is I've created just an empty Copilot here so that we can kind of play around with it. And we're going to use the weather um, API just as a simple thing, but you can use your imagination as we go on how you would do this in other different uh, actions. Um, so what you'll see here is we have all these different components and you can see here that we don't have any actions defined. Now you can click here or you can go to actions up here and be able to do it. Just for simplicity, I'm gonna click here for this one. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add the weather option. And you'll see here that we've got this MSN weather. Now, what's interesting about the MSN weather connection is that it doesn't actually really need an authentication. It, it has its own API that uh, just doesn't require authentication, but it's still under the, under the covers has a connection for it that is an anonymous connection. But I wanted to show you, a lot of people don't see this because they don't scroll down and see that it's here now, which is user authentication. And I'm gonna leave this at user authentication, but you can see here that we could also use Copilot author authentication. Now, in this particular case, we would almost always use uh, Copilot author authentication. I'll show you why as we go forward. So I'm gonna continue to move forward on this and just say next. You'll see here that we've got our inputs. I'm gonna edit our inputs really quick just to make this easy for us. And I'm gonna change this to set as a value. 
and I'm going to set this to Imperial so that that way it will return back Imperial and not ask me a question about what unit of measure uh, that we want to use. And we're just going to go ahead and finish creating our, our action here. Now, while it's going and creating this, think of it that this is the part where we're creating that conversational wrapper to this API. And as it goes through and it creates all of this, it's creating all the connections, it's creating how to connect to this API. It's also explaining what this API does so that I can go and actually communicate with it. And so now that it's created it, I'm gonna jump up here and let's just take a look at the actions pane. You can see here that this is set to be triggered, but I do have to come in and turn on the generative uh, preview here so that that way it can route to this particular conversation. So we're just gonna go ahead and hit save on this and you'll see now that we've got this, we're good to go. Now, once we come back over here, I'm gonna click on the test pane and now that I've got the test pane up, I should be able to say, what is the weather? And what you're gonna see it do is it's going to go out and figure out what action can do this particular thing. And you'll see that it generated a question for the location. Now I'm gonna put in uh, Nashville, uh, Tennessee. And you'll see it come back and it didn't answer the question. Now, a lot of people after build started to get confused by this because they're like, why is it doing this? And the reason it's doing it is because of the fact that we need to use a user's authentication. And so what will happen is you'll click this connect and you'll see that it's not connected as the user. And then I'll need to come into the settings here and you'll see that all of a sudden now I have the connection, I have the authentication set up, and once I have the authentication set up, I can come back over and I can hit retry. And when I hit the retry button, it should go ahead and answer the question about Nashville. Now, so this is a situation where this API doesn't require an authentication, but because I've said that I want user authentication, it's going to make me go through the process of defining this in the test canvas. And a lot of people get tripped up by this and wonder why is it doing this? And so let me show you how we can fix this. So I'm gonna first reset this test conversation and we'll close the test canvas really quick. We'll go over into our actions and we'll open up our weather action. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change our weather action to be Copilot Author Authentication. And this is going to use the authentication that is defined by the author of the Copilot, not making the canvas authenticate the actual user so that that authentication can be provided to the API. Now that I've done this and I come back, let's just jump back over to the overview screen and go to the test canvas. And now if I ask the question, what is the weather? What's gonna happen now is it's gonna use the authentication from the actual author. Notice it didn't have to ask me a question and I can answer this now. Again, and you're gonna see that it will answer the question for me without prompting me for an authentication or a connection for the user. I hope this video was very helpful for you to be able to get a better understanding of how to use user authentication for actions. If you like these type of videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, you can try Copilot Studio by going to aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.